Hello, everybody, and welcome. We're going to go ahead and finish getting set up here for you uh, while everybody's being admitted to the meeting room. And uh, we look forward to showing you a great demonstration today. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, well, first of all, welcome, and I hope everyone and their families as well uh, during this, this time. Um, we're doing our best here to stay socially distant. We're wiping down our equipment as everybody's seen in the previous live demonstrations. My name is Kyle Hurst. I'm the regional sales manager for the Ohio Valley. I am at our new location in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it is also the location of one of our repair centers. We have two other repair centers, one in New Berlin, Wisconsin, one in Hanover, PA. Uh, all three of these locations are up and running and supporting our customers. We appreciate uh, our customers and what they're doing and the operators, and we want you guys to know that we're here to help you. Um, my, our company is Rhino Toolhouse. We have over 80 sales engineers, application engineers, material handling specialists in 30 plus states. Um, we've, you've seen us on a few of the uh, earlier virtual demonstrations. And at the end, we're gonna do a little bit of Q&A. So save your questions. You can put them into the chat window at the end and we'll, we have a moderator who will uh, read those out loud to us and we'll get you, get you answered. So today, our vendor partner that we're gonna show off is a company called Estic Corporation based in Osaka, Japan. Their US locations are um, Erlanger, Kentucky and Detroit, Michigan. We're gonna show off their Handy Light series, which is the, the hand tool line of intelligent fastening tools. They also make uh, fixtured spindles and servo press equipment. Today though, again, we're focusing on the hand tools. So we have three controllers and three tool lines we're gonna show off. We're gonna show off the HT50 Handy Touch. So this is a touch screen. I can edit, I can program through the actual screen itself. We'll display the results and the graphs here uh, for you. The HT45, which is the, the basic controller. So this will display channel output, job output, uh, torque value, angle value, uh, but a simpler controller. And then we have the, the handy cordless controller. So this will attach to our cordless tool today. So when we're talking about Estic, one of the unique features of it is what we call intermittent fastening. So Estic has a direct drive feature that most of us are familiar with. It's what we're used to and where we have a torque reaction, uh, whether that be a pistol or a right angle tool. And oftentimes that reaction uh, limits us in what we can do. It might mean that I have to move from a pistol, which I would prefer to a right angle tool, or it might mean with a right angle tool that I have to fixture it in some way. So Estic brought a unique technology to the market where we call it intermittent fastening. We're actually stopping and starting the motor extremely quickly to mimic pulse technology, um, but it is actually a direct drive. So we will limit that reaction, but we will get the, the feel and reliability of a, uh, of a direct, direct tool. So, the three tools we're gonna to show off today, I've got the high speed 15 newton meter pistol. I've got the high speed 100 newton meter right angle. And I've got the 100 newton meter cordless right angle. So when we say, we'll start with the, the 15 newton meter high speed cordless. When we say high speed, the high speed series was the second series introduced by Estic around 2015. And they run at different speeds based on the incoming voltage and at a much higher rate given the high speed. So this tool itself at 110 volts will run about 2000 RPMs. At 220 volt, will run a little over 3000 RPMs. So again, most of our customers with a pistol tool have some limitation. So they can do somewhere between say six and eight newton meters before they're required to switch to a right angle tool or have some sort of torque reaction device. With Estic, we can not only do uh, 15 newton meters, we can do all the way up to 70 newton meters with a pistol tool. And we have very limited reaction. We can actually hold it in just our hand. So today we have this 15 newton meter tool. 
We're gonna set it up here on the 3 8 joint and we're gonna run that for you. You can see I'm not having to even hold the tool very tight and I'm hitting 14 Newton meters. So next we'll show off the high speed 100 Newton meter tool. So this tool is a half inch drive. This tool at 110 volts is 750 RPM. A 220 is 1000 RPM. And we're gonna test it on the large joint here in the back. So this is running on the touch box here to my right. So you can see I'm running above 80 Newton meters and I'm able to hold that with one hand. One of the unique features you'll notice about the Estic is the different color LEDs. So there's actually seven different color LEDs on each of the tools. Today we're using blue to indicate the forward direction, purple to indicate the reverse direction, green for good, red for bad, uh, yellow can indicate a certain type of failure. It could be high torque, it could be high angle. Uh, and then there's also a white light. So we can use the white light as like a not ready light. The tool is, is on but missing a program. And these different uh, lights are assignable. So you can pick what they are and you can actually make them solid like we have them or blinking to mean a different thing. So finally, we have the, the cordless tool. This is the 100 Newton meter cordless right angle tool. We're gonna run it on the large joint in the back. So again, it's hard to read, but we're up at 80 Newton meters. And you'll notice one of the unique features is not only am I pulsing in the forward direction, if I'm set to pulse mode, I will actually pulse in the reverse direction as well. Again, 83 Newton meters. I'm holding it with one hand. So one of the things that we've been working on uh, that you saw a few weeks ago was our cobot. And basically when we began to think about this, the intermittent fastening and reduced reaction led not only to benefits for operators, but benefits for uh, using them in autonomous situations or autom automated situations. So today, what we've done is we've put the high speed 30 Newton meter pistol tool. It's mounted to our Doosan collaborative robot. Collaborative robots have a limit in how much torque reaction they can absorb. And it's, it's created a need uh, for a tool with limited reaction. So what we've done here is we've mounted the standard high speed 30 Newton meter tool, regular cable, we have a right angle adapter, we have an end of arm tool that's made to, to hold that tool. And we're using 24 volt IO to communicate directly from the robot to the tool. So we're starting and staffing everything other than the initial signal for the robot automatically. And then we have a, a floating spindle there on the end to give us some uh, play when we come down to tighten the bolt, much like you'd have on a fixtured application. So Brandon, if you would. So the robot is receiving, coming down to the right location, giving the start signal to the tool. It receives the okay signal before it moves on to the next location. It knows it's finished the count. It's coming back and it's reversing those same bolts. So we'll run through that one more time. So again, this is the standard tool. This isn't a fixture tool. Go ahead and go one more. And this is a tool that you could take off. I could take off the robot right now, even with this program that's in there and run it over here on the joint kit with, uh, with my hand pulling the trigger. Again, all the signaling is automatic. The ESTA controllers can handle all field bus. We're using 24 volts uh, because that's what the robot prefers. All right, and that is the extent of our virtual demonstration today. So we'd like to open it up for questions from the audience. Uh, we have one question here. Uh, does the intermittent fastening cause a decrease in durability? 
So that's a common question. That's a good question. So the question was, does the intermittent fastening, the pulsing or the mimicked pulsing cause a decrease in durability? So the answer to that question is no. So the key difference between what we refer to as our traditional pulse tool and the ESTIC tool is that there is no extra component into these tools that allows them to do that. There is no pulse unit. So in a traditional pulse tool, an air pulse tool, or even some of the newer electric or battery driven pulse tools, there is a hydraulic pulse unit inside the tool. That hydraulic pulse unit has pulse oil in it, hydraulic oil. And over time, uh, that oil begins to break down and actually changes the output of the tool. Not only that, it requires a lot of maintenance, which is probably where this question is coming from uh, originally. These tools actually have a unique ability uh, to switch between a direct mode and a pulse mode. So I could actually take uh, certain models, not all of them, some of them are pulse only, but certain what we call the regular series, I can actually have from one program to the next, have the tool run direct, and then in the next program run into pulse mode. And because of that, because of the way we're starting and stopping the motor, there is no extra component. So there is no extra wear item. When we test these tools or ESTIC tests these tools, we test them to a million cycles at full torque using pulse mode before they are released. So good question. How do you control the pulsing? So one of the unique features about the ESTIC is that we have several different levers we can pull in regards to controlling the pulsing. So the first three components of that are called runtime, stop time, and pulse level. So when we begin the programming, we actually set the point at which we might start pulsing. So in, in the case of this tool that we had set at, I think, 75 Newton meters, we might start the pulsing at, say, 30. There's always a safety factor built into the tools that doesn't allow you to start pulsing at too high, and it is based on the maximum output of the tool. So we set the pulse start torque, and then inside of that, we would run it. Ideally, we would want somewhere between eight pulses, and you might not be able to see from where the camera is, but I've actually got a very small graph here on the screen where I can count those pulses. So we want between eight and 12 pulses, and that's sort of a guideline, right? That's the balance between uh, speed versus accuracy and operator comfort. So we want around eight to 12 pulses. We're at about seven here. Um, it can change. You want to run a few cycles. So then if I said, hey, I want to soften the pulsing, I'm, I'm only getting three or four pulses. What I would start with is I can change the pulse level. So that's essentially the motor power applied from one pulse to the next, the increase in motor power. I can also control something called runtime. So the runtime is actually the um, extremely small length of time where the motor is running during that pulse. So it is fractions of a second. So one of the things we can do is either lessen or lengthen that tiny pulse. That's actually the slight little bit of reaction you see when we tighten the tool. And then um, really the final setting around that is something called drive slope. So that allows us to adjust the slope, the slope of that um, pulsing curve, of the torque curve. Perfect. And we have uh, two questions here that I think are going to have a, a similar answer. Um, what is the tolerance on the torques achieved by each tool? The uh, second question, how does the accuracy of the pulse tool compared to uh, traditional torque tools? Yep. So ESTIC, like most uh, DC electric tool makers, when we run in direct mode, even with an ESTIC direct tool, we're between, say, one, one and a half percent accuracy. In the pulse mode, we say 5% or better. Um, one of the things to notice is that even though we overshoot, which is, tends to be the most common, uh, we know we overshoot. So the, the accuracy is in, compared to our target value. So if I'm shooting 75, I might hit 78 or 80 even. But I know I hit 80. It's not a question of what did I actually hit. It's not accuracy to that. It's actually the accuracy to the target value. Perfect. And I uh, apologize to everybody about the, uh, the low battery signal. Um, next question. Uh, how does this compare to Atlas Copco's uh, TurboTight algorithm, also to DeSouter's DC Pulse pistol tool? So the TurboTight algorithm is a little bit different. So with TurboTight, uh, I'm not an expert on TurboTight, just first and foremost. But I believe what it's doing is it's using advanced braking. So on certain joints, they can achieve a very limited reaction. But on other joints, it doesn't function uh, quite the way that it does on the other. With the ESTIC, we have the ability to pulse on any type of joint and dial that pulsing in 
particular to that joint. Uh, and also we go in both pistols and right angles. My understanding of TurboTight is that it is only in right angle tools. Uh, the DeSuter tool that I am a little more familiar with uh, is a somewhat similar technology, except that it's using a very small pistol tool and they actually use a set of gearing on the front of the tool to achieve a higher torque, but also limit the reaction. So it is more like a traditional pulse tool in that sense, in that they're using some extra component or gearing to get uh, rid of the reaction and increase the torque value. But uh, that is still an excellent tool. Perfect. Uh, next question, uh, how many controllers do you need for different size tools? Good question. So all of the ESTIC tools, other than a cordless to a cordless controller, right? All of the corded tools can run on either box. And that goes all the way down to the five Newton meter uh, screwdriver type. Uh, there is a smaller, like a micro screwdriver that runs on a different controller for five Newton meters and below. But essentially from five Newton meters all the way up to well above 300 Newton meters, uh, we run on the, the two handy light type boxes. Perfect. Uh, what is the surface cycle of the tool? Uh, how many runs down between services? So we recommend, uh, and ESTIC recommends about a half a million uh, for PM and calibration. Uh, we've had tools go significantly longer than that interval. Uh, it really depends on the use of the tool. ESTIC is sort of unique in that um, I have some tools on hard joints that run all the way up to near their maximum value. Some of them all the way up to the maximum value and we still do a uh, half a million or more shots uh, annually without maintenance. But a half a million is sort of the default answer. You would want to do a PM. Perfect. And this is kind of a follow-up question. Uh, do you need a controller for each separate tool? Uh, I think they're talking about the cordless. Uh, and in this case, yes. So currently the ESTIC cordless system runs on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, they are developing more of an advanced uh, wireless system where I can do multiple to one, but as of today, it is one to one. Kind of around that up. question. Around that, oh, sorry, Stephen. Kind of around that question, one of the other things that's interesting is that if I have like a two spindle where I choose to use what we call the hand tool, the triggered tools, in an, an automated application where I might have two or more spindles, I can actually put the controllers next to each other and daisy chain them together. And one of them will act as sort of the lead controller and communicate with the PLC and function through the daisy chain and control all of them and synchronize them at once. So, but each tool would have its own box. Can you run the cordless without a controller? So yes, uh, there is a way to put it in what we call standalone mode. We could do that for you here or you'd wanna have one controller at your plant. So what you would do is you would program the tool um, through the cordless box, and then we would sort of disconnect it and put it into standalone mode. All right, we'll give it a few more seconds here in case anybody has any last questions. Well, I think you're, you're good, Kyle. All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay well.